I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Coach um, Mickey St. Germain. Mickey is a C CEO of Keep On Sharing for the past four years. She has been fundraising on every level from corporate to nonprofit. Mickey is here today to share with us how to create symbolic relationships with organizations in order to raise funds that can benefit both parties. So please join me and a warm GSFE welcome to Mickey St. Germain. Yes. <laughs> You're muted, honey. Yeah, there we go. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I've been excited to be here. I'm looking forward to this all all month and I've been doing a lot of traveling. So um, the first thing I'd like to do is I've met many of you in person. So I'm kind of familiar with a lot of your, your businesses and what you do. Um, however, if you guys would just throw something in the chat just so I can see what your business is. And that way I'd like to take your business and what you're doing. And as I'm looking is see if we can collaborate and make it fun and kind of interactive and how I can bring you guys together or give you some ideas. Um, for many of you uh, I have that do know me, you know, I've done multiple businesses. Some I have worked through in the corporate world. Uh, others have been through fundraising. Other have been just uh, starting businesses on a shoestring. And uh, what I have learned through this journey, um, I'm going to give you guys some of the information that I that I've learned and hopefully keep you from making the same mistakes or even giving you a little bit of insight on how to take your product or your business to the next level. Um, in the corporate, you know, going into a bigger business um, and depending on where your business is in the stage and your goals, uh, there is many ways that you can do fundraising. And I'm just going to touch on a couple of them, you know, just in case you didn't know. Um, some of it obviously is bootstrapping, which is your, your personal savings and, you know, going to use your own revenue, which honestly I like as my favorite because I'm in full control of my own business. I don't have to worry about anybody else being in there because I've started it on my own. And I'll help you. Uh, learn how to do that, you know, in some of the ways and the things that I've done and how to connect. Um, obviously, friends and family, uh, angel investors, uh, crowdfunding, grants, uh, bank loans, uh, accelerators and incubators, um, revenue sharing. And there's all different types. As a business, there are so many facets and so many things that you can do. But I will tell you with angel investors, uh, they are going to want um, equity. So that I've run into that just in my in my own journey with keep on sharing, you're going to find that anybody that wants to give you money wants a substantial equity. Uh, the other thing too is also venture capitalists, same thing. They want equity uh, grants. Um, in my experience, I have found that if you are going to do any kind of grants, whether it is for profit or nonprofit, uh, get a grant writer. Grants are very detailed. Um, some are very specific. They want certain things, um, and a grant writer can actually save you a lot of time and effort uh, going through. You can do it yourself, although I am finding, though, with grants, they are very specific and time sensitive. So a lot of times with grants, you have to know where you are in your business and do you fit the criteria of what they're looking for. Uh, I also have worked with, um, and this is something that each and every one of you can benefit from, is the Women's Business Center. The Women's Business Center is a non-for-profit. They're out of um, uh, Cal State Fullerton, and they work with women business owners, and they are amazing. They will get you in touch with the people that you need. They will help you with your marketing. They will help you move forward a lot with what you're doing within your business. Um, anybody can, can benefit from this. Uh, and how I discovered them through my company uh, and I was working with the Women's Business Center. They were helping me with marketing and my other strategies and the grant writing. But because we created that relationship together, they are now taking the people that are just starting businesses. Like I have a, a woman who just started a, a, a business as a speaker and she wrote a book. Um, she's a cancer survivor. She has uh, collaborated with me and now I have her on my podcast, you know, so getting in touch with the Women's Business Center will help you in many, many ways. I'm very excited about uh, them. That, so that's awesome. There's other ways too that you guys can collaborate. And this is outside. I'm talking about outside things that I have used that can help you in the long run. Um, I have, uh, let me take a look at some of your, some of your businesses here. So, okay. Workshops, leverage. Okay. Technology author. Okay. You can see you guys, this is great because a lot of you are 
offering a lot of different things. But even though something is different, you can find a way to collaborate. And one of the things I have found with fundraising is you've got to think outside the box. Now, there's a very fine line between fundraising and marketing. It really, they really kind of go hand in hand because the people that you're going to collaborate and work with are going to be able to help you grow your business and vice versa. The, you know, they should be able to help you. Um, for some of you that are uh, for nonprofit or that you have, uh, you know, you're trying to get, you know, either raise money, you have to ask yourself two things. Am I raising money or am I just taking items? If you're just taking items, then it's it's different based on taking money. That's a whole different ball game. And I highly recommend that you have uh, some kind of um, legal and also um, financial advisor that can help you with that just to keep you on the, you know, straight and narrow that. Um, but what I have found for the nonprofit, and that's really kind of where I have worked with a lot of different people and a lot of different companies. Um, a long time ago, I, were, I first moved here to San Diego. I worked for GT MobileNet. Well, GT MobileNet is now Verizon. And during that time frame, I was head of marketing. So I actually worked and did a lot of the community work, which I, I loved. But we had a skybox that was up at the Padres. And when we weren't entertaining, you know, some of the larger companies for, for GT MobileNet, we were uh, offering to do different things with a lot of the nonprofits. And one of the things that we did, and you'll see in my bio, is I worked with Hands On San Diego. Uh, and what we did is we got backpacks. We had, we worked with the Padres and said, hey, we want to do a fundraiser for Hands On San Diego and get backpacks for the kids. We'll use our skybox if you guys will, you know, coincide and we could do something together. But we also did it just even out on our own. And then we got all kinds of donations and we ended up giving away over three, I think we gave like 3,200 backpacks away, which was very on a very grand scale. However, the reason I'm telling you this story is coinciding and, and collaborating with someone else to be able to grow your business, whether it be for nonprofit, for profit, you, you can still cross over and, and do things that can help. Um, one of the things that... Um, I'm just going to kind of, everybody's kind of here in the Southern California. I know a lot of you are in Canada and, and up through other places throughout the country. Uh, however, some of these things that I'm going to suggest that I've used in the long run have really helped a lot. Uh, there's a lot, 5Ks. 5Ks are held everywhere, whether you hold them virtually, whether they are, you know, in person. Um, but one of the things that 5Ks look for is they give away gift gifts. They give away gift bags. So they're always looking for people to donate. And you may not be a big sponsor, you know, that pays a couple thousand dollars for their 5K run. However, you could go in and be a sponsor and offer gifts into the gift bags. Now, with that being said, I know a lot of you don't want to put out a lot of money, but think about the reach that you're going to have giving out these gift bags at 5Ks because they're, they're huge. I know we have quite a few that fall around the holidays, even here. Uh, in Dana Point, we've got the turkey trot. Well, I know a couple thousand people come out for that. And during that time frame, um, I again, like I told you, I've had done many businesses. I had, I started a candle company. And one of the thing I was doing was soy candles. And I, I'm like, how am I going to get my name out there? I mean, so there's soy candles. Nobody knows this. So what I would do is, you know, the little tea lights, for some of you that, I mean, you'll, most of you all burn candles. So just the little tea lights, I would make a tea light I get the little bags that I got at Michael's. I put my business card in it with a tea light and I, that's what I gave away. I ended up putting them in all the gift bags for the turkey trot. And then not only that, I left them everywhere. I cannot tell you how many orders I got because I left one on the back of the toilet in the ladies room up at the Irvine Spectrum. And you just never know who is going to see your product. You have to think very broad when it comes to fundraising because you again, marketing and fundraising are very close together and you have to be able to get your name out there and be able to, for people to see who you are so you can start raising those funds. Now that's raising funds for obviously for you for profit. For nonprofit, uh, there's many, many things that you can do. You can start collaborating with businesses. A lot of businesses love to collaborate with nonprofits because they one, it looks good for them, two, it's a tax write-off, and three, they will bring you back every single year. 
there's quite a few businesses. Um, and again, I'm using the examples that I know of just where I've worked. Uh, I've done it in Atlanta and I've done it here in Irvine. There is a lot of health. They do a lot of health fairs. A lot of businesses will hold health fairs and then let, they'll bring them in their inner office or in their buildings. And they're always looking for people to come in, whether it be for uh, some of your coaching, whether it be for, you know, your actual health products. I know um, quite a few of you that I've met through the years through uh, uh, GSFE is you do a lot of vitamins or you do um, health products. So these are just some ways that you can help. Uh, some of the smaller ways that you could do things is, um, and a lot of you guys know I'm a coach and I work, you know, I'm a high school coach. So we are always looking for people to bring in money. Um, we're always trying to build um, money for the for their uh, teams. We're always looking to build money. So your boosters, go to your local schools and get in touch with your boosters. Your boosters are oh, they're, they're tired of selling cookie dough and wrapping paper and popcorn. And now I've got, even I've seen even some of the teams I've worked with, they just got the kids calling and, and asking people for money straight out. Well, and nobody wants to answer their phone. They don't, they're like, why would they? They're not getting anything out of it. You know, grandma and aunt Susan's gonna help just so much, you know, when it comes to the sports. So I would suggest go, go to your local high schools, you know, ask for the booster, find out how your booster clothes for your football, your soccer, your baseball, and take your product in there and find out what programs do they have happening right now. A lot of times they have got, they've got fairs. I know they do, they, they do stuff year round where they are trying to raise money for their sports. A lot of times you could take, if you've got, again, um, is anybody on here has, I know you've got some health oh, juice plus. Okay. So so I'm just going to use you for an example. So I know for me, um, a lot of times right after practice, my guys are hungry, they're thirsty, they're dehydrated. Uh, and we used to have, and this was smart because we would have one of the moms who had a health, she had did health shakes. That was part of her, her business. And she would come down after practice and she would give all my kids health shakes. And even, even if they were just some little cups, just to replenish them. And then in another year, I ended up having uh, another mom who had the little tiny packets that you could put into your water. And she would come out, staple their business card to every single one of them. And she would, she gave them to the guys so they could put them in their water. And me as a coach, I would just go, Hey, make sure you give your, you know, your parents, say, and give your parents a card. Or if you guys want this, please connect with, you know, Mrs. And I forget her name. I apologize. So there, there are so many ways to, to collaborate and start to fundraise. It's not just go out there and getting um, a, a table, I mean, at the craft fairs. I mean, these are all grassroots things, but looking at bigger ways to collaborate is how you're going to get seen. Um, going back to what I was saying when I ended up um, doing some things outside the box, so I taught, uh, I opened up um, martial arts studios down in San Diego. And my job was to go out there and make, make people aware in our community that we were a martial arts studio. So going out there, I was like, okay, well, how am I going to, you know, there's so much you can do, I mean, to go out there. So I, most of the time I would go out and I'd put together a team and we, I would take the kids and we'd go to the schools and we would do parades. We would do um, just things out in the park to make aware. And so I'm going to take this on for you. For some of you that do your workshops, for some of you that speak, for some of you that um, want to get in front of crowds, go go on to, to um, other places and look who's out there. I know out here in the... Um, park. They do yoga in the park. Um, I've walked in, I've walked up to her and I said, Hey, let's collaborate. You know, I teach women self-defense. She's like, Oh, that'd be awesome. So she, she taught her, um, yoga and then I taught my women self-defense. And then what we did was I did it for an hour. I cheated you know, and then we switched. So anybody that wanted to do women's self-defense from the yoga class came over to me and whoever was, uh, in my self-defense class went over to her yoga, um, yoga, <laughs> yoga <laughs> forgive me i've been traveling a lot so i am sorry <laughs> i'm not running on all eight cylinders at the moment. um so uh yeah so a lot of these things you guys can collaborate and do some uh really fun things thinking outside the box a couple um a year uh, well it was quite a while ago when i was uh still as an instructor teaching uh, I met a gal and uh, she actually, she was through GSFA. She, um, 
did jewelry and she had a huge jewelry and she, she went to different markets and she did a lot of events and she, you know, went, did a lot of things. And I said, we should really do something different. And we put together an event called Jewelry and Jiu-Jitsu. And again, I brought in all my women for self-defense. She brought in her jewelry. She put her whole display out. We had so much fun because we taught being beautiful inside and out. Now, why am I telling you this? Because a lot of you are coaches. A lot of you are health coaches, life coaches, you know, success coaches. You you know, you're doing different workshops. Collaborate with other types of people that you wouldn't think about doing. You know, it might be as simple as walking again into a yoga studio or walking into a martial arts studio or maybe even just going to go to the, the middle school. You know, a lot of these kids, you know, they look for speakers and look for people that are doing different events. And if they're doing something, they love having someone come in from the outside that can help benefit them. And then also giving back. Um, you have to be able to, if they're going to collaborate with you, you've got to collaborate with them. And one of the things that I, I find um, the collaboration has been the biggest asset I've had in any of my businesses, any of it, because you have to, I'd heard one time, and he came from a very smart man that I, I worked with. And he said, you know, this is a secret to business. And he he had a you know, multi-million dollar business. I said, how do you do it? And he said, you know, honestly, the only thing I live by is you have to give a little bit more than what they expect. And when you're doing your business or you're speaking, you know, and you've got your book on the back table or you're doing something, giving a little bit more People appreciate that because they know for a fact that you're doing it genuinely because you you care. And, and I, I wrote down this quote because I thought this was the coolest thing. Is that people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And when you are going out in fundraising, you are selling you you you're, you are selling your product, but you're also a representative of who you are. And when you are uh, you know doing health coaching or you um, okay the real estate planner, you know you that's a lot. I mean, you have to personally be with that person. I mean, so Jennifer, you're you're dealing with people, and and this is personal. You know, I mean, money is personal. So having that collaboration and working with these people, um, they're looking at you because they know you make them feel safe and comfortable. And you and I've met you personally, so I know you, you definitely come across that way too. And, but, and, but there's a lot of other things that you guys can do to be able to help. A lot of you are authors. So how do you get your book out there? Um, when I did my first book, what I want, I ended up contacting every coffee shop, no matter where I traveled. A couple of times when my, my daughter was living out in Virginia, I, I called the coffee shops ahead of time. I said, hey, I'm going to be in Norfolk. I'm an author. I would love to be able to come into your coffee shop and do a book signing. And what I will do in return for you is I will make sure that I put all of your information on all my social media so they know that I'm coming. And also so you can see all the people that are there. And I'll also contact all of the local, you know, the freebies and stuff like that. And there is like, just go onto the events page in that area. You can find it on other social medias. You can find on Keep On Sharing. You can find it on Facebook. You find them on all, you know, all the other social medias. Look for the events and then collaborate with these people. And what was so much fun is that people came in to get a book signing. But what do you think they did? They went and got a <laughs> so I brought a lot of business. And on top of that, they put up on their billboard that they were having an author come in for book signing. So it was really, really fun uh, to be able to, to collaborate with that. Uh, real quick, because I got about five minutes. Uh, podcasting. Podcasting, um, get on podcasts. A lot of you guys know we're podcast hosts. Um, I've invited many of you. Uh, you're welcome to come on and, and be part of my podcast. Uh, if you are in other per people's podcasts, I'm going to tell you what I do. But if you are in others, I highly recommend that you make sure that this is something that is happening. When they do the podcast with you, please ask if they would put your information and embed it into the podcast. Um, having your link embedded in the podcast is a permanent link. I got people that have done podcasts with me over three years ago that are still getting business because they're up there permanent. You know, once it's on Spotify and Apple, it's a permanent link, you know, unless I stop doing a podcast and, and you know, keeping the platform. Uh, so you want to be able to do that. 
support each other on social networks, um, make the comments. I know a lot of times on our GSFE, we do shout outs on things that we do and who we like and the, the things that we've done or who we've worked with. Do it also together on the other social media platforms. One is gonna give you credibility. Two, it shows the support. And other people that are looking from the outside are going, okay, if, you know, if this person gave, said, hey, this is pretty cool and they use the product and they know you, they're going to look easily to, you know, to the other person. And that's another way um, to collaborate. Um, I crammed a lot of information <laughs> into the short time that I had. So um, if any of you uh, would like to connect with me or uh, do something with me, or you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me. And I will be more than happy to uh, help you with your business and what you're doing. So thank you so much. Did I make it within my time frame? <laughs> You did. You did a great job. Thank you very much for all that excellent information. <laughs> so, again, questions for the speakers. Uh, RV, would you like to take over?